dada o o ti ade para da la ra yi ti lo lo e mi ya je para da wo da yo je o bi ko ye aye ma mi lo o yi lo Alele, a good day, day we, as a good boy, just surely. Shall I fear any more bagu goa? Lady Maria de la Tiona, Nicalupuamu, and you yawa, Connie Yele, Lashe de Mare. Good evening, you're welcome to the program. Uh, this is going to be a pre recorded program, and uh, whenever you come across this video, um, this is something that just uh, that was just brought to my attention by some of my uh, old uh, followers. Uh, some of them just reminded me of a video that I did a few years back, about four years back now, uh, about a prophet called Prophet Melody. Yeah, a prophet called Pro Prophet Melody. In, uh, I think that was in Worry. That was about four years ago. There was an incident where it was caught red-handed and he was arrested for faking miracles because one of his uh one of the people that he contacted to come and had fake miracle in his church was uh caught and arrested by the uh police and when they were being interrogated he was implicated and thereby the police invited him this was about four years ago and then personally they interviewed him where he also confessed to, you know, doing what the other guy confessed to. Now, few days after that, another video came out where it was shown that he was released and to everybody's surprise, people still came out in their large numbers to welcome him back as if this man is a hero. They gave him a very warm welcome as if nothing happened, as if they didn't even see or hear what he did. Now, as at that time, I did another show where I was saying something about, I really don't understand what is going on. Have we so been brainwashed by religion that we can't even think and we can't even, you know, try to correct people when they are wrong, not minding whoever they are. Anybody can come out and say they are a man or a woman of God, but that doesn't make them our Lord. That doesn't make them superior over us. We should be able to measure out punishment accordingly. The same measure that is being given to every other person should be done to these people also. But I discovered that in most cases, people tend to just be like, let it go. And sometimes I question the fact, is it because we were told that the Bible said, no matter what your sin is, as long as you can confess, you will be forgiven. And then everything is okay. And you are right with God. And then you can go back, you know, and do or act right. And most often I question these beliefs. I question this uh, practice because I see a lot of time, times without number, these same people go back to do the same thing over and over again and always come back and say they have asked for forgiveness and they, they are going to move on because they believe God has forgiven them because that's what the Bible told them. And I part of my question is, okay, what about the victims? The people that you have done all these evil or bad things too, that are going to live with this nightmare, with the scares, the scars that you have caused in their life, that will never forget that. Maybe at every point in time, at every turn in their life, something will bring this bad memory back to them and they can never let go. What about them? How and where do they get justice? Now, I always believe that some people have true repentance and you can see it in their face, in their action, 
and in everything they do. Why some never repented, but they just bamboozle everybody. They force their way through anything. They say whatever they want to say. They do whatever they want to do. And they try to play the victim always, which right there shows you there is no remorse. There is no true repentance. And that's an indication that they are going to do it again. Those type of people always believe that they just slid off or they just made a minor mistake. That's why they were caught. That as long as they are not being caught, they've got nothing to be ashamed of. And nobody's going to catch them again until they get caught again. And then they do the same thing over and over again. They will never be remorse because there is no punishment for what they are doing. Now, I can say this so-called prophet melody I can place in this category because I'm surprised that today we came across another video where a young man was narrating his story and his audio in the hand of this man. And you know, Nigeria, the Nigerian system, the Nigerian police, the Nigerian government, the Nigerian court system, the way everything is, you know, positioned, is so corrupted to where as long as you have money, you are, you are, you are somebody that have uh, influence, you are a man of affluence, a woman of affluence, you can do anything to anybody, spend some money and get away with it. Allegedly, according to this young man, something took place. Prophet Melody committed an abominable act, according to the young man in question, who I'm going to show you his video. But before then, we're going to start by showing you what happened in the past, how Prophet Melody confessed to the crime he was alleged to have committed then. And then after that, we, we are going to see another video a week after or two weeks after when he was released and he came back to his church and the crowd throng there, you know, giving him a heroic welcome as if he has done nothing wrong and is just a hero, you know, as if he was, you know, just a victim of injustice. Then, lastly, we are going to listen and watch the video of the young man who alleged that the same prophet Melody performed some abominable act on him. Why am I showing this video? I just want us to be educated. I want us all to learn one or two lessons from this. And then after watching the video, I will come back with my submission. So let's go fully into this video and watch everything right from the start. So the, the so-called fake prophet melody, I'm just using this, you know, title to say it's in the news again. And I'm reminding my viewers that this was the same man that was caught performing fake miracles four years ago. Yes, four years ago, this man was caught performing fake miracles and he confessed to that crime. What is your name? My name is Saoki Ayis. Huh? Ayis. Ayis, from where? From uh, all the local governments. Huh? All the local governments. All the local governments? Uh. In which states? In your Korea. In huh? those states, in those states. In those states? Why are we here? I'm here. The, the, I'm here. Louder, I'm not hearing you. I'm here because of they arrested me and uh, I want to go and do this thing from a, for a prophet. From prophet? Which prophet? This pro. Well, oh, remove your hand now. Look at the camera, prophet. Uh, look at it now. Look at the camera. What's your name? What is your name? Prophet Melody. Eh? Prophet Melody. Okay. Yes, go ahead. What happened? So they, they pay me. They pay you how much? 5,000. To do what? Like I can prophesy anything, sir. Okay, to prophesy anything? Yeah. Okay. 
the person that the, the agent that carried you, what's her name? Her name is Lovette. Lovette. Yes. Where does she stay? Stay in Agbo. Stay in Agbo. How did your picture get to the prophet? There's not me the picture, I sent it to him. There's not you the picture, at where? At the... Uh, at the uh, at uh, the park. At the park. Yeah. Which park? This uh, Bini Park. No. At Patago Park. No, in uh, in Abo. In Abo. Yeah. They send the picture to his phone. Yes. Okay, those are the pictures we see in his phone. Yes. Eh? Yes. Okay. That so when they send the picture, what will happen? When they send my picture to him, and I pro he prophesied to me. Uh huh. So what did he prophesy today? Today is Sunday. Yes. You went to the church today? Yes. What did he prophesy for you? He prophesied that I should be careful so that they will not kill me. And he prophesied many things to me. OK. So at the end of the day, they give you how much? 5,000. 5,000. Is it this uh, prophet that gave you? Yes, he sent somebody to give me. Eh? He sent somebody to give me. He sent somebody to give you? Okay, the other person that uh, behave like a winch, now man or woman? It's a woman, I don't know that one. It's a woman? Yeah. Okay. Prophet, look at the camera now, don't embarrass yourself. You are a prophet now? Is it not? Yes. Huh? The woman that pretended to be a witch in your church, where did you get her from? From, I don't know where she comes from, but my, well, my, the person that brings people from me, bring water to me. What's her name? Love it. Love it. So how much did you pay them each? Mm, Five thousand was given to them. Five thousand. Okay, am I right to say you are a false prophet? Am I right to say you are a false prophet? The right to say so. Okay. Am I right to say you have defrauded the members of your church? Ah, there is nothing to regret now. You are talking to is this me and you? So I've been doing church for years before I came into this. So it's not. So how did you come into this? How how did you come to start defrauding your members of the church? Huh? So you are right to say so. Okay. And I'm also right that it is the product of the fraud that you used to build the church and you used to build to buy your cars and do everything. You are right. I'm also right to say that the miracle you are performing in the church is fake. I'm asking you now. You also profess for Yahoo boys. Yahoo boys come to your church. We have a ten of them. You profess for Yahoo boys. You also yes, pray for them to win, to win money. Yes or no? Huh? Yes, huh? Yes, Ah, it's very simple now. I'm not beating you. I'm not going to do you anything. It's just to speak the truth. So if I charge you to court now, will you have any defense? No, I don't have any defense. Huh? I don't have any defense. Any okay. Defense. All right. All right. Now, after that incident, he was arrested, right? And taken away. Then a few weeks after, he was released. When he was released, the video you're about to see was the kind of welcome that the people gave him. Watch this as it unfolds.
So you can see how the man turned from being a froster to being no, a yeah. uh, This next video you're about to watch. This is the current one, and this is the latest incident. This young man is the young man that alleged that Prophet Melody uh, performed some abominable act with him. He narrated the story, how his mom took him to Prophet Melody's church, and how Prophet Melody stylishly excused his mom and after his mom had left the room, how Prophet Melody started talking to him and asking him to expose himself so he could see how he used his position as a pastor and as an elderly person to talk to him, to talk him into, you know, exposing himself. And what prophet melody what the boy alleged that prophet melody did next will surprise you and amaze you and i'm coming back to talk about that because right now it seems like there's a problem but i'll let you watch this video then after i'll come back and talk about that let's watch the video my name is inaria ibivichu i'm from Bayasa state i'm 18 years old so last year february my i was sick so my mommy took me to a church lightweight ministry which we all know as prophet melody at Jija. when we got there that day i was very very sick i was on drip i was very weak then he told my mom that he had treatment for what was wrong with me that he had solution to it that he will use plantain that red thing he planted that he grew plantain to do medicine for me to calm the sugar level down. So that same day, he asked my mom to excuse us that he have something that he want to tell me. As my mom excused us that day, then he was like, ah, your eye is sexy. Wow, you know, see, you be fine, boy. Then I was like, uh-uh. Bro, if not be this kind of thing, carry me, come here. Then I called my mom that day, let's go. And told my mom that she come and see me in the office on Tuesday, which is a service. And I got there that on Tuesday, when I got there on Tuesday, there was church service. Then he said I should wait to see him after the close. I waited and service ended. He said everybody should see him. Before. I should be the last person to see him. Then everybody saw him that I was. It was me, only me, Osha Benedita, and Pastor Kane in the off, in the church. Then I went inside the office to see him. Then he was sitting opposite in the opposite chair. Then he said, um, "I will ask you right." I said, "I'm okay." He said, "Ask your body." I said, "I'm fine." The next thing he asked me, are you tasty? I said, no. He said, okay, go and take water from the fridge. I took ever water from the fridge. I drank the ever water that day. After drinking the ever water, I was now asking me, um, please, can I see your dick? I was like, uh-uh. Why you want me to see? You want to see my dick? Why? You be guy man like me now. Why you go want to see my dick? He said, come on, shut up. You are wash, grow up. You be, you be my small picking. You be, picking, you be like picking to me. Come open your dad and make I see. We are not talking. He zipped my trouser down. He brought out my dick. Then he put it in his mouth that day. And I was like, ah, Prophet, stop now. This is no good. If my mommy find out how she go, fee. Now come out for the office that day. He did not give me the medicine. So I got home. He called me. Are you home? I said, yes, I'm at home. He said, okay. The next, he said, I should come and see me in the office. That was on Wednesday, which he had no service. He's the only one in the church that day, and Osha Benedita, and his cleaners there. So when I go to the church that day, he said I should pass through the back door to his office to come and meet him. I went inside. So when I enter inside the office that day, then when I go to the office that day, 
he, that he said um, I should take off my I should take off my clothes. I was like, why now, prophet? I said, prophet, no now. I will tell my woman about these things. He said, take off your clothes. What thing you hide from me? I don't understand. You don't say you be uh, my own picking too. Take off your clothes. Before I say, he started pulling my clothes. I was like, prophet, no now, prophet, no stop. Then he took off my clothes. He slept with me that day. Then he asked me. He told me. Don't tell anyone. I should not hear this thing from anyone's mouth. And that I'm, I was a member of friend did then. Then he said, um, if you like, go and tell your pastor, Pastor Jomak, or anybody about this thing. I should not hear it from anyone's mouth. Anybody mouth. Keep quiet. Then I went home that day. Then I was like, as, I was afraid. I was like, oh, God, I want to tell person this thing. I want to tell everybody this thing when they happen. I can't fear. So then I left to worry that period. I packed to Agbaru. So when I was in the Agbaru, I started sleeping, having dreams. I would see me in my dreams. He would drag me to that same office. He would sleep with me. After I wake up, I will not be myself. I will start scattering things, behaving as if I'm no longer normal anymore. Getting anger issue, getting quarries into people without no reasons and reason. After I realized myself, I would start begging everybody. Even everybody's complaining, I don't know you anymore. Everybody's complaining, ah, you don't change. Not be you, be this. It didn't keep happening frequently. So, what made me body issue at which, which day year I got. I went to charge my phone, then I said, okay, let me go and sleep in my friend, please. And I slept there, I had the same dream again. When I woke up, the signs and reactions of everything was already happening. So I had to leave the boy house because I was afraid, let me know what scatter things there. Then I go to the house. When I go to the house that day, I started destroying things in my house, scattering it. Then I was like, ah, oh God, this thing don't need worse. Instead of me to write this thing, I need to tell a person about this thing. Then I called my mom. I said, mommy, hello, I get with you, I want to tell you. She said, okay, come worry. Then I can't go worry. I can't tell her. She can't call everybody for her family there. Because okay, I can't defend that side. They go me Lord, the church, they go me down. Everybody say no go, no go. Calm down, calm down. Now I tell my mom, say they not the year from one person mat. Go to church, me year from your side of the story too. And I will match good daddy, my mom, my stepdad, and my mom. So daddy went to the church. My mom went to meet him. They were discussing. They were like. Um, but I want, Madam Mercy, I want to thank you for not bringing this issue out. Thank God, my respect for you as a Christian. Thank God you came to comfort me. Is that he was not denying that he did not do it and everything. I was still provoking. I was, ah, God, I cannot let this man go because he did this thing to me now. Like he's now denying everything that he did not do anything. And now, so the next morning he went to Enere Police Station to lay complaint that I'm trying to fall this name out of fear. So the DPU in any police station called me and was like, Diamond, we want to see you in the station. Then I said, okay, I will call to the station. Then my mom told me I was not feeling fine, I was not strong, so I was unable to go to the station the two times they called me. So they started to come to the station. Today, that is Wednesday. So I'm preparing to go to the station, but before then, I said I should let everyone know what has happened. In case anything happened to me, everyone should be aware of what happened to me. So now, everybody have been calling him and telling him that he should leave the issue because my mom have been begging him that he should leave the issue because my mom said she don't have money to a case or money to continue this matter because he has money more than us and everything. Everybody has been calling and everything. My mom called, my dad even went to beg him in his church, Sundays, every day. Even my dad now who had IPP pressure because of this whole matter and everything. Everybody has been begging him, different pastors have called, calm down and leave this issue, everything. He said no, he said because I don't have any evidence, he will take this matter to court, he will take matter to jail, that I'm blackmailing and everything. Then I said, okay, I have to come out and let everyone know now, this is what is happening. Just because I don't have money to fall, because someone is oppressing me, this man is trying to take me down. He's oppressing me. All right. Uh, there you go. You had everything from the young man, uh, what he experienced, uh, allegedly, according to him, in the hands of uh, Prophet Melody. The same prophet melody four years ago who was caught you know staging fake miracles and was arrested by the police but later released was given a rousing welcome a warm welcome and then since then he has been out of the news you know the way it, the way things are in nigeria uh most of them that you know do such things believe that after a few months people will forget about whatever they might have done now this is what i want to say about this young man's case uh if you listen carefully part of what i want you to pay attention to i'm not saying he's lying or he's telling the truth 
But I can tell you there are some truth in what he's saying. Yes. Because you can see the man, the, the, the young man is mentioning names, dates, and the day of the week that the event took place. If you pay attention, he's mentioning a certain name, an usher called Benedicta, because whoever that usher was, was present when this incident took place. That's part of the reason why I would want to believe this young man's you know, story. Even if Benedicta is being called to bear witness, she, he or she might come out and say, no, that didn't happen. I was not there. I didn't see you. Oh, there was no time that you came to the church to see, you know, Pastor Melody. That could happen. But I want us to know that for this man to be saying what he's saying and be mentioning that usher's name, he mentioned that twice. When this in this incident took place, this same usher Benedicta was around, not there. He didn't say she witnessed it, but he said the usher was around within the church premises. Now, here is uh, where I would say this boy probably didn't do some things that he ought to have done. Like the first time that this incident took place. He should have told his mom. He should have caused a scene right there at the church. And he should have told his mom. If possible, and truly, if Prophet Melody put his tongue on his manhood as he claimed, no matter what, if it comes to it, there's still a way that it could be verified if anything of such took place or not. That's one, that's one part of what I want to say. But it let his God loose. He didn't do the right thing. He let that slide. Then on the second hand, when Prophet Melody asked him again to come to the church and to come alone and then to come through the back door, this boy shouldn't have gone. At least not by himself. Probably even if he has to go because of whatever reason that he believes he has to go and see that prophet melody, based on his first experience, that would have been the day to tell his mom to come with him and never leave him alone in the room with that prophet, no matter what happens. Even if he doesn't want to tell her what took place the first time. And probably with his mom being there, probably the second event wouldn't have taken place. Whatever Prophet Melody planned to do on that second uh, day probably wouldn't have happened. Now, let's say he let his, his guard loose again. He went. And then eventually he ended up with Prophet Melody. Remember he said Prophet Melody asked him to take a drink. Now, I will tell you this. Based on stories that I've had here in the United States of people that have been victim of the so-called man that wants to hang around men and do stuff with men, based on the stories I've had from some men that said they were tricked into such a thing taking place, most of them, and that's why I want to believe it, and I, I forgot they told me the name of some drinks that these so-called useless men that call themselves whatever they call themselves usually have in their houses that they will have hanging around somewhere. And they said those type of drinks, if they offer it to you and you take it, it's a way it makes you feel that if you are not careful, if you really don't know what you are doing, it could make you do what you didn't plan to do. Because it's a way it's going to react in your body and make you feel certain things. Yes, I've had a lot of victims tell me about these drinks. And they are like, uh, you know, for those of us that do drink, that drinks alcohol, that drinks vodka, gin, and all that. It's something of that nature, but they have their own special brand. And they are in different form. 
that they trick people to drink when they want to lure them into such acts. And after that, anything can happen. Now, probably, I don't know, maybe there is something in that water or it's just ordinary water or whatever it is. But that's another thing for you to pay attention to when you are having an encounter or when you are being cornered by somebody that you feel might be how to harm you or introduce you to something that you really don't want to partake in. You need to be careful what you eat and what you drink. You need to be careful. Yes, there are some drinks that are made for these purposes. Actually, probably they were not made for, you know, this thing to happen between a man and a man, probably between a husband and a wife. Maybe that's what they were made for. But these people are so corny and they, they've honed their craft to where they understood that whatever it does on the female body, it can also do on the male body. And they have adapted that. They have adopted that as a method of introducing some people into, you know, what they are doing. So as a young guy out there, as a young lady, you need to be very careful of you know, what you accept to drink or what you take to drink from people like that. Otherwise, you might find yourself doing something that you didn't plan to do or what you are not set out to do. And before you realize what is going on, something bad might have happened. Now, the other thing was, on the second effect, this boy claimed, alleged, that Prophet Melody had his way with him. Which means, if I get him right, Prophet Melody penetrated him. That would have been the best time to tell his mom, to report to his mom, and he should have been taken to an hospital, to a doctor, where they can conduct a test, which will confirm that actually something took place in that area. And probably, depending on how buoyant they are or how far they want to go with it, they could have got a DNA that would show that actually Prophet Melody has done something on his body, which could have been his evidence today. But because he let down his guard again, he let it slide, he let it go, he said, according to him, he claimed he didn't tell nobody. But rather than tell somebody, he decided to move away from that city and travel to another city. And lo and behold, he said, after that, according to him, some imaginary things started happening. And it looks like he's no longer himself. And this is what is causing him to come out now and talk about it. I'm not going to dwell on this so much because I don't want to make this a very long video. I might be talking about this later on in another video. And also, I will be following this event because I believe this is not the end of everything. If you listen carefully to what the young man said, now, the uh, allegedly, according to him, Pastor Melody is trying to turn the table. You and I know the way things work in Nigeria. He who pays the piper, dictates the tune. Yes. We've seen it happen many a times. Now, am I saying the boy is saying the truth? No. Am I saying he's lying? No. Am I saying Prophet Melody is guilty? No. Am I saying he's not guilty? No. But we are going to follow this event as it unfolds. But based on experience, based on history, based on what we know, a lot of these people do this stuff and they pay their way to get out of it. Uh, like I said, I will be following this event and see how everything unfolds at the end of the day. I just want to brought this, I just want to bring this to your attention. And I want us to learn together. Learn one or two lessons from this. Talk to your children. Get them to understand that no matter what they are going through, no matter what happened to them, they shouldn't be afraid to tell you. Educate them, tell them, teach them. Yes, somebody might threaten them and tell them, oh, you tell anybody, you tell your family, I'm going to do this to your whole family. 
bring them into confidence. Let them know that nothing is going to happen. No matter what happens to them out there, no matter whatever happens to them when you are not there, they should feel free to express themselves. Let them know that nobody in this world could love them more than you, their parent. Until I come back your way, I remain your friend, your brother, uh, Dr. Mike Ola, your own, your one and only Ifa Gugu, and I wish you a good night rest. Good night.